<laughs> yes, we all keep trying like fools. <laughs> Who are these people? Friends of yours, huh? Now, this really pisses me off to no end. Come on, stick Hey everyone, welcome back. This is The Gerbil, and that was Lopan from Big Trouble in Little China. Man, if you guys have never seen that movie, it's an amazing 80s, I think it's the 80s, kung fu action with Kurt Russell and just a great cast, all, all around great cast. Anyway, so my GAC here, yeah, um, you know, I want to say it was it's a win i mean it's a win you know a win's a win take the win when you can but when when wicked gets deleted and you can't revive him well that's just not right you know that that doesn't make up for it ewok should not be permadeath i mean actually he's back in my roster he's okay i guess but Ah, still, my heart weeps. Reminds me, when I was probably in the first grade, I remember I had a birthday party at school. I think it's, it's like the only school birthday party I can remember. And <laughs> somebody, I remember a friend, like, told me to come over and look in my locker cubby. Somebody had ripped open a present. And man, I, I, remember, I remember that so vividly. I was so upset. And I, I wanted to investigate and find out who did this, who tore open my present, who took the wrapping paper and tore it. <laughs> yeah, it was an emotional moment, I guess. I'm 42 and it stuck with me. Anyway, it was a Captain America and I really loved that Captain America. Do you remember your first Captain America? Everybody should remember their first Captain America. Well, I don't really know what happened to that Captain America, but I remember it got partially melted at some point and then dismembered. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I dismembered it or it just fell apart after being melted somehow. But I remember I buried it in my yard and then forgot about it. You know, I, I figured he needed a proper burial, so I buried him outside. And then years later, years later, I ended up buying that house from my mom that I grew up in. And I just, I wanted to find that Captain America. And I just looked and looked and I couldn't find it. And that's what, what I thought about today when Wicked got deleted. Of course, he's back in my inventory. I know, I checked, he's there. Did you know that in 1984, there was a, a live-action Ewok movie called An Ewok Adventure, Caravan of Courage. It kind of sucked. I, I, I wish it was better. I love these little furry freaks. But, I mean, it got 21% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 5.3 out of 10 on IMDb's rating. I've never actually seen it. The trailer made me want to throw up a little bit. Oh, Fooey. We'll have a funeral later. Don't worry, Wicked. Uh, but anyway, this this battle here with the bounty hunters is going to run on and on without Wicked. We're still going to win. It's just it's going to take a while. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit like four times normal speed or something it's already four times but now let's let's double this again i hope you all don't mind but seriously there are moments where these ewoks are going to take like 12 13 consecutive turns maybe more even without wicket and it's kind of grindy but yeah so caravan of courage uh was in 1984 and then later there was another one uh, another Ewok movie. I don't remember the name of it. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up here and put the picture. But it was about like, like these marauders that come to raid the Ewok village. Like, why the hell would they raid the village? I mean, if these guys have spaceships, they can go wherever they want. What do they want with Ewoks? Who knows? And then there was um, a cartoon series uh, that fared a little bit better than 
Caravan of Courage, it, it got a 6 out of 10 on IMDb. Like here, take a look at some of these graphics. Man, this stuff, 1985 and 1987. I'm saying, I, I gotta say, I think it's better than Clone Wars. Absolutely. I mean, look at that animation. And then, of course, Ewoks have been featured in their own comic series and like a dozen children's comic books and novels. And yet, we just don't have many of them in the live action movies these days. I know they showed them in the, the Last Rise of Skywalker, I think it was, I don't remember celebrating and jumping for joy but it was only two of them we need more ewoks ah this is a good matchup um who are we looking at akbar omi princess leia omicron and uh we just took down someone i wasn't even paying attention one two three triple shot 18 times three is fifty-six thousand damage woohoo uh true 28 not too bad but we're gonna get that up higher I keep talking to a lot of people about who's best to put in here. R2, and everyone keeps telling me Fulcrum, but look at this. I I just, sorry, I disagree because, well, I can't say I disagree yet because I haven't really tried it out much for at all, actually, but it's done. See, right here, we're all but guaranteed full banners because Leia is just going to be like, hey, plus 5%, plus 10%, plus 15% health and protection. And the enemies are not shooting back because why? Because... Oh, we missed it. But the stuns. If you keep everyone stunned, they can't fight. And that means Leia is just going to heal everyone. And you're guaranteed full banners. Of course, it depends who you're going against. I mean, like, if you were fighting against Rogue One, you can't stun Jer Jen Urza. <laughs> That's a joke. Who puts Rogue One besides me on defense? Yeah, I put Rogue One on defense. No, they've never held. Not to the best of my knowledge. But they're all high relic. And my hope is merely that somebody throws like an overpowered team against them and just like it just eats up something or 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 they um they they underestimate it and i one day get to laugh and feel surprised hey good job cls 65 banners but we expected that all right let's take empire against mon mothma now this one I went in with a little trepidation because of the speed. Kyle is so fast. So I had to do some math on that, right? Because Kyle gets plus 40% speed or 30% speed. So you got to take his speed divided by 0.7 to find out his starting speed. And it was like 360 something, I think. Of course, Vader gains plus eight speed for each enemy rebel, each enemy Jedi, and each Empire ally, I think. So he had five enemy rebels plus one enemy Jedi, Kyle, so that's six. Four allies, that's 10. So I think that's plus 80 speed. I don't remember, I have to look at his kit. But this one was kind of a nail biter in that I was worried about not getting the initiative. And then I got the initiative and just didn't do as much damage as I was hoping. And then Thrawn almost bites the dust. And then Biggs, who, I think kind of sucks, and I think actually Biggs is in line for an Omicron very soon. I would not be surprised, in fact, if we get a, an Omicron Biggs this week. Maybe next week. I don't know. But I really, really think we're going to get an Omicron Biggs. Why? If not Biggs, Wedge. Wedge or Biggs. Why? Because why not? Um, they're a duo. They've been focusing a lot on... Rebels, I mean, like, we just got Akbar Leia. Yeah, I know, you could say that. We just got Jen Urza, which makes me think that the next one might be K2SO, but I doubt that. I don't think they're going to give back-to-back -back Rogue One. But then again, see, I think the profundity is coming, so it wouldn't surprise me at all to give another Rogue One an Omicron. Because Jen Urza's Omicron is interesting, but I don't think it's going to make a difference on that team. And especially since it's not Grand Arena, like, who cares? So let's move on. Sith Eternal here. Um, I got him up to Relic 7 for this. Uh, well, no, maybe 6. I don't remember. But he's Relic 7 now. I don't remember if it included here. I, I only have three of his Zetas. And so far, I still just don't understand the point of him. I know I got to get the ultimate. And, and I'll get there. But it's going to take a while. But I'll get there. 
and then maybe I'll like him. But right now, I can't stand him. Um, e even against weak teams like this, I lose banners. And in Grand, uh, sorry, Conquest, he doesn't beat anything. Um, I have taken down a couple of teams in Conquest, like some of the really, really easy ones. But anywhere that I actually need a heavy hitter, he's utterly disappointed me. Now I'm hoping, hoping that again, with that ultimate, it'll make a difference, but I don't think so because he seems to do best when everyone around him dies. And that means you're losing stars, which isn't gonna help in conquest. So I'm kind of regretting farming him now, but the problem is, the problem is like Kenobi, I could have got Kenobi probably much sooner. I could already have Kenobi, except I, at the time back in December when I started my quest for C and gave up on Kenobi, Watt was like over a year away. See, my, my guild, I love my guild. They're great people there. Um, but we only get like 12 shards of Watt a month because we, we're, it's not a high power guild. We're pretty chill, pretty casual like me. Um, we did just boot three people who have not participated at all in territory battles for the last two months. And we're like, okay, you guys have been really awesome to talk to, but you're not helping. And it's like, I feel like a jerk doing that. But the reality is this game is becoming more and more of a team effort outside of Grand Arena. And also, like, as an educator, I don't like it when people sit on the bench and collect the rewards, but don't participate. So we warned them, we told them, we said, hey, you know, in my guild, we're not gonna tell you what to farm. We're not gonna be like, hey, you have to do this. I mean, come on guys, this is a game. We should do what we like, right? If we don't do what we like, we're not enjoying it. If we're not enjoying it, why the hell are we doing it? So, you know, I've talked to a bunch of other guild leaders and, and uh, I've talked to some Alliance leaders and I'm just, you know, they so many of them, they're hyper competitive, which is fine if that's what you enjoy. And I, I am competitive but I'm not gonna make other people be competitive. With that, anyway, we did boot three people um, just because it's absolute no participation. So I don't know what I'm talking about or why I'm talking about it. What were we talking about? I don't know, I got sidetracked. Anyway, we need nine people to fill out the guild. If anyone's interested, hit me a, a message and we'll chat. Um, easy going group. Oh yeah, Kenobi. So yeah, I, I realized I was over a year away at that pace on Watt Shard. So I thought, well, let's switch over to C. And I got C in three months after that, um, less than three months. It was like, I think it was December 28th when I committed to C and I unlocked him about three weeks ago. And anyway, kind of disappointed, wish I had gone after Slicker instead. Now I'm going after Slicker with a vengeance because I need Finalizer and another fleet in Kyber, right? We need more fleets on defense uh, and offense. Um, so I'm going after Slicker because when you get Slicker, you get his whole team right with him. I mean, like his whole squad's good to go for Arena. I mean, you get Hux and Finalizer. You get the Kylo Rins with their Tie Silencer and uh, the Command Shuttle. And you just you just get a whole fleet. I mean especially as a new or free-to-play player. Slicker is probably the, the most like effective GL to go for early on. And yeah, of course I went for Master Luke, who's probably among the hardest, him and Kenobi. And then C, who I talked about, but I'm just meh. not that impressed with C. I don't know what it is about him, but he's just underwhelming. So we're doing pretty good, huh, on this GAC. 64 banners. Yay, another territory cleared. So now it's just the ships. The Bane of Kyber. All right, home one versus home one. So here's some more evidence why I think profundity is coming. You've got nine rebel ships. Let's see if I can name them all. Cassian's U-Wing, Distance U-Wing, 
Wedge and Biggs, Hans Millennium Falcon, Y Wing, Ghost Phantom, Outrider. That's eight. Huh. Maybe it is eight. Maybe I'm missing one. Anyway. Anyway. So you got eight, but I think you got nine rebel ships. And who, how many did I just need for this win? Three. I only put one reinforcement in Cassian, and now I wasted it because I didn't even call him. That happens, I would say, 50% of my matches with Rebels. You, depending what you're up against, you often don't need a reinforcement, especially if it's, if it's a mirror match. You just have to have the speed advantage. If you've got that speed advantage against Rebels, Rebel v. Rebel, you win. So if you only use three or four Rebel ships, then you have four or five because I think there's nine, five more in reserve. And they now have no capital ship. They're homeless. So, yeah, I'm certain we've got another rebel capital coming any day now. Still think it's profundity. Profundity. That name just blows my mind. Profundity. Interesting fact about profundity. When you see it in Rogue One, the, the Mon Calamar ship has this kind of ring around it with like a... A spire hanging off from the bottom and the bottom of it is the, the battle command deck the ship itself was built as an underwater skyscraper it was a tower it was a sh it was a city building that had a dual purpose starship most Mon Calamar ships are that way that's why they're all so round and spherical they're actually made initially as buildings on planets that could lift off and travel as needed. And so the profundity didn't actually have any weapons or shields for that matter, not defensive force shields for combat. So that ring around its center section and the command module at the bottom of that tower were added on after. You can look at it carefully and you can kind of see it's a different, it's a different tone of metal and it's not present on most of the other Mon Calamar ships, like the Radis right there, or the Home One. Okay. So, yeah, interesting, interesting fact about Mon Calamar ships. Yeah, anyway, so here we are with my Chimera. I'm finally getting this right, right? So I'm putting Darth Vader, TIE Bomber, TIE Fighter as my starting lineup, and then I'm saving the Emperor Shuttle as my first reinforcement, although I People are telling me that the first reinforcement should be second sister. Uh, I have to research that more. But I'm using the Emperor Shadow as my first reinforcement because I recently learned that he heals people. Ah, uh, the angels rejoice. It heals. Well, go figure. And I needed to heal. Now, I lose this match, which is a bit upsetting. There's so many times, like right here, I could have killed um, that that whatever bomber thing that is over there. What is that? I don't know, Rose Tico ship. I, I could have killed it and I and I misclicked. I quite literally pressed the wrong button. I I healed up my team when I didn't need to and I meant to attack. And, and if I had attacked, my fat fingers had hit the right button, then my fingers aren't fat, actually. I don't know why I said that. I'm looking at them now, they're not fat. If I had hit the right button, I would have attacked and killed it, and then the next turn I would have done that, and then, uh, whatever. I got a turn behind, and because of that, I, I think I lost. But what's, what I thought was really comical about this is even though I'm going to lose this, like right here, look at this. Yeah, that hit was huge. Uh, when this battle's over, <laughs> the Radish flies into my ship and goes boom, right? So... I lose the battle. There's two resistance ships left. And I go to start the next one. I'm like, there's no capital. Like when it, when I lost, I've never seen that before. I'm like, uh, uh, is this going to be counted? How does this work? Do both fleets die? Because <laughs> there's no there's no capital. But no, as you'll see in a second, you just have to join it. And there's just no capital ship on the other side. So I get to mop it up with, uh, with my... Uh, <laughs> Don't you just love that right there? Yeah, so I get the mop up here in a second with my finalizer crew. And they are so weak still. My, like, my Hux is like gear nine or 10. I mean, 
it's depressingly low and only four or five stars, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Anyway, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this GAC and the ramblings of a crazy little chattering gerbil like me. But uh, I'm going to sign off now, and I thank you for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.